G'day guys, Sammy here and welcome to another Sammy Hitsky fishing adventure. Only today is not an adventure, no, today we're going to be talking about everything you need to know to get stuck into a few tailor, predominantly from the beaches this time. Now I'm on location right now at one of Australia's most popular tailor fishing locations, beautiful Fraser Island. It's about two hours before we have to get ready for the afternoon session, so the perfect time to go through all my kit and get you guys armed with a bit of knowledge so you can get out there and have a crack yourself. Uh, we're going to go through pretty much everything guys, so if you haven't chased Taylor before or you have and you just want a few pointers, plenty of info coming straight at you. Hope you enjoy. There he is, in the waves. He's a bit better fish, I think. Oh, he's a lot better fish. We're gonna kick it off with chatting about setups. Now, this is my current tailor fishing off the beach setup. It's what I'd call the new school version of the old school. This is a 65 Stealth, an LV 65 Stealth. Uh, it's quite new, you can see it's vented. Uh, super, super light compared to the old school stainless backed ones. And this is actually paired with the new Stealth Rod, Alvi Stealth Rod. It's a 650 or R650S. Uh, these will be coming out very shortly. This is actually a prototype I've been testing for them. Absolutely awesome, casts like a dream. But the whole combo itself is super, super light, which is why I love it. Uh, the old school version, something like this. This is still a relatively new Alvi, but the old glass rods, very effective also, but the weight is uh is a lot more but hey if you've got an old glass rod in the shed i'm sure it'll do the job they've done it for the last 150 years so i'm sure it'll be fine now the reason i like to fish alvies is because in the surf they literally are unbeatable uh they don't break you can wash them in salt water they don't corrode they love the sand and they cast a long way i've got this spool with 20 pound mono that's schneider line i find it really good for the beach um, 20 pound will have you sorted for both the beach and the rocks if you're just going to go solely beach you get away with 15 uh, but you do have to keep in mind sometimes you are casting quite large sinkers and 15 pound does have a tendency to go crack if you are if you mess up so 20 pound a bit more forgiving also gives you plenty of pulling power if you need to stick it to a jew or a shark or a really big greenback uh, 20 pounds should have you covered. Now these rods are a little bit different to the old glass style in that they're a really fast taper. Now in terms of casting, I've been able to get a heap more distance with these than I could with my old glass rod. Um, just purely, I reckon, the, that whip in the rod, that, that fast taper really just rockets the bait and sinker out. Um, it's a little bit different to cast. I know the first time I tried to cast this fast taper rod, I just about ploughed it into the surf because you do let go of it at a different time than your old glass ones, but I'll tell you what, uh, it does cast like a rocket. And this will have you sorted for anything from a 30 centimeter chopper all the way to greenbacks and, um, and small dew if you manage to come across one. Now rig wise, this is my preferred rig. That's a two gang with a swivel between, about I'd say 40 to 50 centimeters of trace, a swivel, then another little section of trace with the sinker in between, a restricted rig, and another swivel on top. And that attaches to your main line. Now hook-wise, I personally prefer larger hooks and less of them. That's why I opt to go a two gang rather than four gang of four O's or a three gang of five O's or something like that. I like having extra gape. Taylor have quite a large mouth, so the extra gape I find gives me a better hook up rate. And um, being two larger hooks, I've still got plenty of hook coverage there. Now, there is some debate going on whether a swivel between the hooks is necessary personally i love it it uh it helps with your rigging while you're putting your hooks through your bait it's actually a lot easier to maneuver that second hook when you've got a, trip, a swivel between and it also gives you that second chance draw that if you hook a fish lightly in the top hook that back hook will quite often swing into that fish's face and create a lot more positive hookup. Now the other advantage of two larger hooks is you don't need to use as big of a bait which we'll go through shortly now in terms of leader I'd usually go between 50 and 60 pound on that leader there. Uh, that's not gonna stop a big tailor from biting you off at all. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier to grab while you're landing your fish and may save you a little bit if they just nick it. And that same leader between the sinker and swivel there. Now sinker size, 
will depend on the conditions you have on the day. If you've got a lot of sweep, you're gonna need a big sinker. Generally, I'm using an eight, a nine, or a 10 if it's really rough. Um, with an eight or nine, you can get a heap of distance from your cast. Anything lighter, you tend to get wind affected, but eight, nine, and 10 on the uh, rare occasion, you get a big cast and you know your bait's gonna stay there. Now, the only time I would change from that is if I do something like this, and that is use a wire trace. Now, generally I wouldn't use wire unless it was night time and I was chasing really big greenbacks. It's just a bit of insurance in case they swallow your bait and go over the whole lot and try and bite you off. That gives you um, that, that bite protection that you don't have from the mono. Exactly the same setup. I've still got the 50 to 60 pound between the swivels there for my sinker. Uh, then I've got the 40 or you'd use 50 or 60 pound wire. I don't think it'd matter too much between your swivel and your hooks. Same length just wire instead of mono. Okay, that's set up and rig sorted. Now let's move on to baits. Now, one of the most popular baits going around and has been for the last million years is the humble Western Australian Pilchard. Taylor absolutely love them, but other baits you can use are flesh baits like mullet, bonito, uh, even strips of Taylor work well, garfish. Um, they have been known to eat pippies and that sort of thing a lot less regularly than your, your fleshier baits. Uh, but those would be the main baits I would suggest stocking up on if you're going to go for a tailor session. Now, I mentioned before the two larger hooks allows you to use smaller baits. And for something like the humble pilchard, that means I would actually use half a pilchard at a time. Now, not only does that mean you effectively double your bait supply by getting two baits out of the one pilchard, it also means you can cast a lot further with the smaller bait and you've got a lot more hook coverage in that smaller piece of bait for a tailor to come through and bite. Now, whether it makes a difference using a half or whole pilch at a time, I don't think it makes any whatsoever. Um, if you're standing in a line and there's 30 or 40 blokes there all casting baits into the surf, if you've got a whole or a half, I don't think the tailor will mind one bit at all. Now, I'll show you how to rig that really quickly. 